We'd like to thank the Stanley and Rumbo Jr. Legacy Society for sponsoring this forum. As is our custom in order to enlighten the folks who live on Palm Beach Island, the Civic Association and Palm Beach TV hosts forums on important issues and political races so we can all learn more about what might affect our town. Today, we're talking about the county commission, the big race there in District 1. Our host is Jim Sackett, very well-known anchor in town, good friend of mine, and he takes it away from here. Thank you, Tim, and welcome to this forum with primary election candidates for Palm Beach County Commission District 1. This forum is being presented by the Palm Beach Civic Association, sponsored by Stanley M. Rumbo Jr. Legacy Society. We welcome the candidates joining us on Zoom and to those of you at home who are watching. So to begin, let me lay out some of the guidelines for this forum. Each candidate will have up to three minutes for opening statements. And I trust that uh, you'll be able to see the clock in the upper left-hand corner. And as was explained a little bit earlier, at 45 seconds, the clock color will turn yellow. And at 15 seconds, it will turn red. So if you start to go over a little bit, I will gently jump in. At a point following the formal rounds of questions, which you will have up to three minutes to answer, each of you will be able to ask your opponent two questions. You'll have up to two minutes for those answers. And we will wrap things up with closing statements of up to three minutes in reverse order of the openings. So with that in mind, the candidates who are running in the District 1 primary are Karen Marcus, Maria Marino, and Calvin Turnquist. Rhonda Bice has declared herself a write-in candidate. However, we only have two of the candidates joining us today, Karen Marcus and Calvin Turnquist. Maria Marino and Rhonda Bice declined the association's invitation to participate. To begin our forum, we will have opening statements from our two candidates of up to three minutes. First, Karen Marcus. Thank you, and thank you for um, having this event today via Zoom, as they all are now. Um, let me just say a little bit about myself, although the Civic Association, I know you well and the town well. Uh, some of your members may not know who I am. Um, I'm Karen Marcus. I am a native Floridian, uh, grew up in the northern part of Palm Beach County. I'm married, I have three daughters, and I have eight grandkids. Uh, I was previously on the County Commission. I retired. Um, I joined many boards and uh, Loggerhead, uh, Maltz Theater, um, Roger Dean Stadium Advisory Board, also started my own nonprofit called Sustainable Palm Beach County and have been uh, 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 busy making sure that I still have some uh, public uh, policy input at the commission level. Uh, some of the priorities that I think we're looking at on the commission are the COVID safety, of course, which has uh, pretty much consumed our lives these days, is how to come out of it safely. One of the uh, things that I'm most proud of when I was on the commission is recruiting the Scripps Research Institute to Palm Beach County and Jupiter. Um, there is a Dr. Mark Farzan who's uh, doing research on the uh, vaccine and antibodies for COVID. And I'm very hopeful that there will be a vaccine soon so we can get back to normal. Also getting our economy stabilized from coming out of this. In 2008, when I was on the commission and we went through the um, recession, uh, was able to help budget, balance the budget, bring us out of that recession and get us back open and, and funding and, and doing jobs. Um, I, some of the priorities I'm looking at, uh, if I get elected and with my experience, I, when I get there, I know what to do and how to do it is to work on the Lake Worth Lagoon cleanup. I also want to continue to work on Peanut Island and the Kennedy Bunker and the status of that. And of course, monitoring the port and their uh, attempts to widen and deepen it. Um, that has been successfully stopped at this point, um, but they are still in the, in the pipeline for funding as long as they don't do anything within a seven year period. And I think we're four years into that, then they'll lose their funding. And so that will be making us feel better that we don't have to worry as much about that uh, widening and deepening project. Also the uh, West Palm Beach traffic I know is a concern for the uh, town of Palm Beach and for the Civic Association. And I think that that needs to um, be dialogued and resolved also. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Marcus. And now we turn to Mr. Calvin Turnquist. Mr. Turnquist, you have up to three minutes for an opening statement. 
thank you. Thank you for hosting this, this forum. And um, like Karen said, in this time of uh, coronavirus, COVID, uh, we're having more and more of these in the uh, Zoom format. Um, good afternoon, my name is Calvin Turnquist. I am an immigrant from the Bahamas who came here to the United States um, under the rule of law with the offer of a visa as a student uh, over 30, 30 years ago. My parents instilled in me uh, conservative values guided by God, emphasizing love for a fellow man, sacrifice, diplomacy, and statesmanship. I am a graduate of the University of Miami with multiple degrees in the sciences. And right now I work as a paramedic in two hospitals, uh, Jupiter and St. Mary's, um, as a medic in both the ER and the um, telemetry unit. I served as a councilman and vice mayor for the village of Tequesta and also served on the Palm Beach County League of Cities um, and also as president and chairman on various boards and nonprofits throughout Palm Beach County. Um, my, my story of how I came here and what I've done is, is not unique. I, I'm, I'm no one special. But what I promise you this is that I am going to work as hard as your next county commissioner, if not harder, than I'm working in my campaign to earn your vote should you select me to serve you. Uh, you will have the hardest working conservative on the board. Um, the way things look, maybe the only conservative, but nonetheless, I'll be the hardest working leader you wish to see. Uh, the thing that I am most proud of is um, my heritage where I'm from and the fact that uh, I value and was raised swimming in beautiful clear blue game waters and that's one of the things I want to focus on uh, as a county commissioner is uh, mitigating the beach erosion that, that we see and having to keep replenishing sand over and over every year. Um, one of the things that I encountered and I said it before is that I want to be a unifying voice in the community because in this environment where we have such divisiveness and you know, between police officers and, and the black community, I think that I am positioned well to be uh, a unifier between all demographics, not just you know, blacks and whites and law enforcement, um, age and socioeconomic groups. So I'm looking to be the one that people can turn to and be that voice when things are disrupted in my community. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Turnquist. Now to the questions for this forum. You will each have up to three minutes to answer the questions. We will begin with Ms. Marcus, who will answer first. We, of course, as you have mentioned, still living under the influence of COVID-19. The county has taken any number of steps to try and keep residents healthy and safe. Do you agree with what's being done so far? Do you think more could be done? And if so, what? You have up to about three minutes. Thank, thank you very much. Yes, I, I think the board's taken the appropriate steps. Um, I think they uh, followed the governor's rules. Uh, the governor said you could reopen, but the three South Florida South Florida counties uh, had to open at a uh, lower level, uh, level one. Um, so we followed the rules, and um, when it the cases started spiking back up, and even after even though the county had asked to uh, go to level two, they pulled that back. They required the masks. That is the one way we are going to get out of this, is if we all just practice our masks, our social distancing, keeping our hands clean, and all, just those three basic things, we can come out of this because we, we are the ones that the virus is growing on, and if we start practicing those rules, we will um, kill the virus. It won't have enough fuel, as Dr. Alonso likes to say, and we can try to get back to normal and get our economy back to normal. So yes, I think they've done the right steps. Um, when I mentioned the uh, Scripps Research Institute, I would like to see more interaction with, with them, uh, steps that we can take, uh, things that we might be able to help them with so they can come up with that vaccine and the antibody test uh, sooner also. But yes, I think they have um, done the appropriate things and uh, hopefully we will continue to see the numbers go down because of what they've done. Um, and then we can start talking about getting back to school. Kids in school are important, um, but you have to do it safely. So uh, yes, I think they've taken so far the appropriate steps, especially with that um, economy group that they have going out at night to uh, places where they've been getting complaints about people not following the rules. I think that's been pretty impactful 
in terms of uh, making sure that the spread isn't out there. So I, I think what they've done with that, and I think we're the only county in the state that is doing that. Marcus, thank you. Mr. Turnquist, same question. Well, let me just say this from, from my term on the, the League of Cities, um, their influence and, and working with them, I, um, I'm, on, I'm off the, uh, the stand that I will oppose all mandates, um, funded and unfunded. So when the county mandated that uh, we wear masks, I was the one, I was, you know, opposed to that from day one. But I think what we should have done was give people specific guidelines and let them work within those guidelines. See, I, I'm in the medical field and I see the effects of the virus every single day. I mean, I've, I've seen death almost on a daily basis and I know how serious it is. Even some of my friends who, and colleagues who are nurses are being affected by it. Um, but I think that we should have stricter, strict guidelines as to how to operate and give those businesses those guidelines too and let each municipality work within those guidelines because I think that each municipality, each community and Palm Beach County, they're unique. And I think painting the county with one broad brush is not the way to do it. Let um, the government that people elect, the, the local leaders, um, let them work within the guidelines that the county set and um, govern their communities best because they know how best to do it. Um, so the mandates, I was, I was totally opposed to it. Um, as far as closing of the businesses, uh, that was selective. I think if you, again, give people an, guidelines, and, and, I, and I know that you know, there are, the majority of us, we're responsible adults. Even when I am campaigning and going door to door, um, I stand away and I put my mask up and I greet people. And, a lot of them were saying, you know, please stand, you know, six feet away and practice social distancing. So the majority of us, we are responsible adults and we are adhering to the, the social distancing and mask aspect of it. But for it to be mandated and, and, and then people are being penalized for not wearing masks, I think that's overreach. And I don't think that's, that's um, what the government was made to do. They're made to provide services and protect us, but do it in a way that gives people choices and let them manage themselves and their own, their own health and livelihood. Because what I've seen with the, the, the mandates and the closing of these businesses is that some businesses are going out of business permanently. Uh, I've met um, several people who work in the restaurant industry and their, their restaurants have been closed and now they're putting their homes up for sale. So um, forcing people to close their businesses and lose their businesses, I think that's, that's overreach. And I don't think I would have not have voted for uh, the mandate and the closing, but give us guidelines and let us work within those guidelines. And I think we would have, would have been in a better position than we are in right now. Thank you, Mr. Turnquist. Um, you will answer this question first. There is the real possibility, if it isn't already happening, that because of the pandemic and related economic hardships, Palm Beach County's tax revenues will be down for a while. How can the county deal with that challenge down the road. You have up to three minutes. Oh, down the road. Well, one, one thing I will not um, suggest is, is an increase in taxes. That, that's definitely off the table. I think people are struggling right now. And um, I know our tax revenues are gonna be short. We, we will have to look at the budget really closely and see what we can eliminate. Um, I think one of the things that's probably gonna get me in trouble with um, law enforcement and uh, let me preface this by saying I was raised by a police officer so I understand what they go through. Um, I think that we are gonna have to make sacrifices um, across the board, everyone, to ensure that we have enough funds to manage the county. Uh, one of the things that we will have to look at is um, take home vehicles for all employees, not just law enforcement. Uh, I know that uh, that's a huge expense on the county as far as maintaining them and uh, making sure that they're operational. One of the reasons why I say this is because I see um, take-home vehicles leaving the county. And, um, I mean, all the way up to Port St. Lucie and Martin County, where I visit frequently, I see officers with vehicles up there. I think if you're going to have a... I, I, First of all, I don't think we should take on vehicles at all because um, if, if I have to drive to work, then law enforcement and everybody else who work for the county should drive their own vehicles too. But I think that's one of the, the one of the biggest things that we can work with the budget as far as um, mitigating the, the, the expenses that we have. 
Um, I know that's going to get me in huge trouble with my law enforcement buddies, but um, I'm, I'm here to look out for all of the residents, not just a select few. And that's one of the things I look at. Um, I don't know if we're going to be, well, well, one, another thing too is I'm going to protect the, the community and, and Northern County from, from overdevelopment. So as far as changing zones to allow for development, um, I'm, I'm going to look at that real close and I don't think I'm going to do that. One of the things I want to do is, and this is long term, is to create another industry for Palm Beach County for which we can generate revenue. And one of the things I'm looking at is um, maybe bringing a, uh, a, a automobile assembly plant somewhere here in Palm Beach County that'll create jobs and that'll create revenues. I know when I spoke about it before, it was the, the cost of that was going to be about three hundred million dollars to bring a plant here, but I think that'll be an investment worth worth it for for Palm Beach County. Mr. Turquoise, thank you, Ms. Marcus. Hi, thank you. Um, you ready? Okay. Uh, I think the budget is going to be challenging. And again, this is like when we went through the recession in 08. It's my understanding from the property appraiser that she doesn't feel like the property values will be as affected. Certainly not this year they weren't. And from what I understand, the real estate market is still very um, strong right now. And so are the values staying up? The hit from that we're going to take in the budget for next year is going to be with sales tax and gas tax that we get from the state of Florida. As we all know, that with tourism down and all of that, the, all those two revenue sources, but they are not the primary revenue sources for the county. So I think we're gonna have to adjust with that. Um, when I was on the commission, we had very strong reserves and I believe this commission has done the same thing. Um, they have some pretty good reserves that they can rely and fall back on. That's why you have reserves. You have it for these types of events and also storms. Um, which hopefully we will not get this year. So um, I, I think that next year will be challenging, um, but I think there's gonna be ways between our reserve fund, um, our still strong property values. Uh, one concern was that people wouldn't be paying their taxes. The property appraiser, when she presented to the commission this year during their budget, said she still felt like there would be a 95% collection rate. Uh, so did the tax collector say the same thing. So that's not, I'm, I don't think that's gonna be an issue for, for next year in, in that way. Um, and again, when you, what we did the last time was we went in and we took, um, we, did, we didn't fill positions, um, we didn't add positions. And if you had to cut uh, in certain departments, you looked at the ones that were the least impactful to the public. We are a very big county. We provide a lot of good services, not just parks and, and beaches and things like that, but also the criminal justice system. Um, we have to build those jails and those courthouses and things like that. So um, um, the, everywhere we can try to adjust within departments and services that we will provide is probably going to be the way to go. So I suspect that, and this is again from listening to the property appraiser and listening to the budget sessions this year, um, our biggest hit is going to be with uh, sales tax and gas tax. And that is not the biggest part of our budget. Ms. Marcus, thank you. This question to you, Ms. Marcus, aside from the pandemic, what, in your opinion, do you think are some of the most pressing issues facing Palm Beach County today? Well, I think um, when we come through the pandemic and a project that I was working on with um, the commission um, before the pandemic came was our water sources. Uh, the Lake Worth Lagoon is a very important uh, resource and a, a issue for not only the county, but the town of Palm Beach and the Civic Association. Um, people may not be aware, but because of what happened in Martin and St. Lucie County and also on the West Coast with the Lake Oak Okeechobee water being discharged and the blue-green algae, the Water Management District has taken the position of shared adversity, and they're starting to send more of that Lake Okeechobee water out the C-51 Canal, which is at Southern Boulevard, and you can start seeing those impacts there. We had blue-green algae last year, little bits of it. So what I would like to work on and what I think is going to be our future is, is clean water and plenty of it. And making sure that um, we clean that C-51 sediment trap. Uh, the proposal was to build a new one that was more effective. So when they did those discharges, it wouldn't get into the lagoon and the volumes they had. Uh, the state of Florida was being very aggressive until this crisis happened on uh, septic to sewer. I think along the coast, uh, next to the lagoon right there, there are hot spots where you have older neighborhoods that are uh, um, um, need to be converted from septic to sewer, working on that. 
uh, water storage out in the C51 basin. So we have enough water to restore the Black Statue River. So there are a lot of projects out there that have to do with water. I think continuing to maintain the budget that we have and being able to still provide the services that people come to expect. And, and I think development is going to be an issue at some point in time, as, as uh, Mr. Turnquist said, we have to start saying no. And what you're seeing in West Palm Beach, I think, is, is going to be impactful to the town of Palm Beach and to everybody else um, in terms of how much development. I know there's pressure on the Ag Reserve to try to develop. That is a, a, a area that the public voted to preserve or to save as much ag land as they could. And to chip away at that, I think, is going to be a problem. Um, and it, it flies in the face of what the voters supported in terms of uh, making sure that the ag land stayed ag. So there are those kind of pressures that are going to be out there. Um, for those of you that are watching the mailboxes, you've seen that there's a great deal of mail negative to me. Um, and I think that's because developers know that I will you know, listen to the public and side with neighbors and not just approve development um, it, just because they want it. So thank you. Thank you, Ms. Marcus. Mr. Turnquist. Well, um, one of the things I think is very important is uh, our, our economy. And like most counties and cities around South Florida, it's, it's, uh, we, we depend heavily on tourism. And that's been down because of the pandemic and also because uh, of the storm and such. But one of the things I want to focus on is, is diversifying our economy. Um, like I said, I want to um, see if we can bring a, an assembly plant here to Palm Beach County so that kids who are graduating high school and who do, don't necessarily want to go off to college, they can have the necessary skills to go right into that industry and, um, and gain uh, gainful employment, employment that will be, uh, will, will provide them with a sizable income. Uh, the thing I want to also focus on is, um, you know, I think, I think uh, Karen and I, we have similar views on stuff like this, but our, our waters and our beaches, uh, like I said, coming from the Bahamas where we have beautiful waters, I, I do not like when we have the, the algae blooms in, in, in around and for, you know, I was born and raised going on the beaches and when that happens, I myself stay away from, from the beach and the water. So one of the things I was speaking to an uh, environmental engineer about is uh, creating um, reef systems off the coast of Florida where uh, the waves can be broken up when they when, when we have storms and such like for instance in, in Bahamas we don't have um, uh, beach erosion even though we get by hurricanes all the time it's because we have natural reef system and barriers that prevent that, that breaks down the waves so we are thinking about creating uh, a, a system of waves that will make Palm Beach County South Florida one of the best snorkel and dive uh, areas in 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 the United States um, so I would like to work on, you know, keeping our beaches pristine and beautiful and, um, and uh, not having to purchase sand to bring back every, every so often. Um, one, another thing too is that, uh, as, as you can see from my campaign finance reports, I am basically self-funding my, my campaign and I do that for a reason. I have not asked anyone for, for funds. Uh, they have been graciously, what I've gotten has been graciously donated to me without asking. And that's because I want to be the voice for the people. I don't want to have to be, be beholding to any developers or special interest groups. My voice will be that of the people. And um, because of that, uh, I will oppose any zoning changes that the residents do not want. And I will not be bullied by or forced by any developers to develop any land in Palm Beach County that my neighbors and residents do not want in their in their in their neighborhood. So on that, um, that's what I exactly, my, my, my promise to the residents is that their voices will be heard on the county commission and I will speak for them. Okay, Mr. Turnquist, thank you. Now, each of you have kind of touched on this. You just did that, Mr. Turnquist, but let's expand a little bit about development going on around the county. Uh, where do you stand on the development versus preserving natural environments? Again, I know that you've kind of touched on it, but if you could expand upon those previous comments. Okay, well, one of the reasons why I live in North County is that um, I don't want, I, I love the area, I love how um, we have a lot of green spaces and I'm a golfer and I love golf, I love, I'm having places where I can play golf and having to you know, fresh, clean air. Um, I went to University of Miami and that was um, a culture shock for me when I came in from the Bahamas. 
So once I uh, was an adult, I moved up here to Palm Beach County in Dequesta. It's a beautiful, quaint neighborhood. And we are, uh, we have a height ordinance then and we're built out. So there's no, no there, there won't be any more building in, in Dequesta. But uh, as far as development is concerned, nothing, not the overdevelopment like we see down south in, in Miami-Dade and Broward. Uh, so my, my residents can be rest assured that development coming in to their community that will increase traffic, increase um, air pollution, uh, decrease our green space and our areas for our kids to play and, and water to swim in, uh, that will be coming across my desk. If my residents come to me and said, we don't want this and they're opposing it, then I'm there elected by them and that will not happen. I'm not saying that all development is bad, but I'm gonna look at each development that comes across my desk with a fine tooth comb and make sure that what is being proposed is gonna benefit my community. What is being proposed is gonna be what my community wants. And if the majority of my community oppose the development, um, it's gonna be a difficult chance for them getting that pass across my desk, primarily because no developer has funded my campaign, given me any um, campaign funds. And I'm, I'm not saying that because they did not give me anything, I would oppose all development, but they know that something across, coming across my desk will not be rubber stamped um, because they raised me $50,000, $100,000. Uh, everyone will have a fair chance to propose their development and their project. But if my residents, especially in North County, because I mean, I'm not just a county commissioner for North County, but I represent North County. But my residents in North County know that I will fight for them to oppose uh, any development that'll take away from our environment, take away from our quaintness, take away from the green space that we have and increase traffic. You now they, they'll know that um, I'm a strong proponent for uh, their voice and, and green space. So uh, developers need to be aware, but when I get the county commission, it'll be no easy go with me. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Ms. Marcus. Thank you. Um, one of the first things that I did when I got elected was the first time was to buy up as much of the oceanfront property in Northern Palm Beach County so we would have public access and beaches. Um, I, th I think the way to preserve and have that green space is through acquisition. I realized you couldn't regulate it away. So in order to, um, to preserve that, so we got state grants to buy those properties. And then uh, in the 90s, we did voter approved bond issues and we bought over 30,000 acres of uh, preserve, uh, 28,000 of which is in District 1. Uh, District 1 is the envy of Palm Beach County because we do have so much green space and, and available beaches. Uh, I think as I mentioned before, I have a record on where I stand with development. Um, I was successful in moving the Scripps project from Mecca Farms to the Jupiter campus with the uh, FAU. Um, and because of that and other projects that I have opposed, uh, there is a, over a half a million dollar campaign going on in this race against me from developers. Um, they don't want me up there because they know it's not just voting no yourself. You have to be able to convince three other colleagues that why the project isn't a good project. And so I know there's a 5,000 acre piece of property out west uh, in the northern part of Palm Beach County that the developer really probably would like to come in and get increased density. And they're afraid if I'm up there, I'll be able to say no, say why it's no and also maybe convince some of my other board members because we can't do anything by ourselves. I learned that early on in the, in the job is that you have to count to four, it's the toughest part of your job. Um, and that's how I was successful in buying the beach properties and, and, and also getting scripts moved and, and many, many other uh, projects. So um, I grew up here, I'm a native. I grew up in North Palm Beach. I still live in North Palm Beach. My kids and my grandkids live in North Palm Beach. So I have roots here, um, this, is, this is who I am. And I want everybody to enjoy and appreciate what I had growing up, which is good jobs, like we provided um, with some of the uh, companies we brought in, including again, Scripps and Max Planck, um, <clears throat> but also to have a great atmosphere up here, a great lifestyle um, that allows everybody access to wherever they wanna be on the beach and, and also through the preserve areas. So um, I, I have a record and I'll stand by it. Marcus, thank you. Uh, this question to you. Before COVID, there was a great deal of attention being paid to the problem of opioid addiction around Palm Beach County. Is it and should it still be a priority? And how can that be balanced with COVID-19 related support? 
Yes, that's been one of the other unfortunate uh, downsides of the COVID is that people have not focused their attention on it anymore. And from what I understand, there are as many people dying from the overdoses than there were before. Um, unfortunately, because the county's resources are so now shifted to stay, keep the mass majority safe, um, they haven't been able to focus on it. But I think continuing when we come out of this COVID cycle, and that's again why the research and the vaccines and the antibodies is gonna be so important, I think it will remain a high priority for the commission in terms of getting the word out there, dealing with some of these uh, um, uh, places that had residents there who were dying of overdoses, who would come down here to recover and discovered that they weren't recovering. Uh, I think the state attorney's office has done a really good job in closing down some of those that were taking advantage of people um, who were trying to be in recovery and it wasn't real recovery. So I think those programs need to continue. I think they're probably still continuing, just not with a higher level of interest or focus or perhaps press or media on it. But I think they're still happening because I know it continues to still be a problem. Turnquist. Well, because I'm on one. Well, I, I know it's a continued problem that we're facing in, in Palm Beach County. Like I said, I work in, a, I work in two hospitals and I see uh, addiction, not only daily basis, but, but frequently. And I see how uh, it can affect families and, and the lives of our loved ones. Um, mm -hmm. When I was on the city council in Tequesta, we had an, a, a big, we call it the pink elephant right there on Dixie <laughs> Highway. And um, we were able to uh, have uh, someone come in, uh, purchase the building, renovate it, and now they have a rehab center there. Um, as, as far as, so we, I, I think having the, the private uh, industry and forming a PPP, private public partnership with other entities in Palm Beach County, and, and those who want to come here, uh, we can provide an, a, a, a place for people to go through rehab and become because uh, it, it addiction affects all of us. It affects our family lives. It affects our economy. It affects how people are, interact with each other. So I think once we help people get over their addiction, and you know, it's it's going to be a lifetime fight. Uh, I think we should be able to provide an, an environment for them to recover. Um, I was, <laughs> I'm aging myself. I was raised in the in the 1980s as a teenager, and I've seen what uh, drug abuse and addiction can do to families and friends. And it's, it's not a pretty sight. So um, I think that with the uh, with, with private companies and working with the county, I think we can provide an environment for them to uh, go through rehab and, and have the support system afterwards to continue fighting that fight because it's it's um, that's something they're gonna have to live with for the rest of their lives. So we it's 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 not in the forefront right now because of the the virus but it's still there, it's still lingering, and it's still impacting us in a tremendous way. So working with private companies is one way that we should continue to fight and provide the resources for the, those who are fighting the, the, the addiction. Thank you, sir. This is going to be the final question of the formal questioning round. Mr. Turnquist, there is no doubt housing in Palm Beach County is very expensive. Where do you stand on public support for workforce housing. You have up to three minutes. Workforce housing. <laughs> that's an interesting, and, and you know, I, I like how that's, that's placed. The, the, the way it was presented before was not using that term, and I think this is a better way of presenting it. Um, we, we have various communities in Palm Beach County, and you know, Palm Beach County is a beautiful place to live. And I know that a lot of people, working class and middle class families, um, have difficulty um, buying homes here in Palm Beach County. Uh, so they moved to uh, Martin and, and St. Lucie County and then uh, commute in. There is, um, th there is adequate housing on the market that we can utilize to, to provide uh, workforce housing and, and affordable housing. We, I'm, I'm a, I, I hold my real estate license and granted, when I'm walking door to door, I'm realizing that there are a lot of vacant homes here in Palm Beach County that can be utilized for workforce housing. And I know that there are homes that are held by banks, um, REOs that uh, are not on the market yet. So we can look into that because I, I do um, real estate investing myself, but I think that working with the county, we can locate those homes 
renovate them and put them back in the market affordably for those for people who qualify as for, for workforce housing. Um, to say that there is a huge issue with workforce housing in, in Palm Beach County, uh, I wouldn't go as far as saying that. And um, but I think there there's there's enough on the market right now where it can be affordable if uh, presented right and have the right investors working with them to provide uh, those necessary homes for working class and middle class folks uh, like myself. But um, I, th I think we can continue to work with the Realtors Association to locate those homes and, um, and, and, and see what we can provide for people who, who work here in Palm Beach County to also live here. Thank you, sir. Ms. Marcus. Thank you. Um, yeah, workforce housing is an issue um, in Palm Beach County. And um, the way the county is approaching it right now is through density bonuses for development. Um, while I think that is okay, it should not be the only solution that we have because what happens is the developer goes into an area that probably isn't appropriate for development and says, well, I'm going to provide 20 units, so you should let me have my development. And so I don't think it's a helpful tool in terms of the amount of need we have. Uh, what I've done before is I go into a neighborhood that um, needs some help. Um, we created what we call community re revitalization areas. We help fund them a little bit. We help them clean up and fix up. We got them some community policing in there. That's workforce housing. Uh, we did it in Cabana Colony. We did it in Pleasant Ridge and Limestone Creek, where we just provided some um, extra service from the county so they could pull themselves up and it's work it's workforce housing it's it's um where do, you know those of us who can't afford the very expensive homes can live and and be healthy and a lot of them are located within municipal jurisdictions uh, if you go up through uh, Lake Park and North Palm and Riviera Beach and on up through there you'll find communities that if we invested some dollars in there and help them be safe. Our teachers and our firemen and others would be willing to go and live there. And, and you're on the coast, so you're near any public transportation if you like to use public transportation. So uh, that's an approach I'd like to work on, working with the cities to find areas, designate them as this is a good place to help provide workforce housing and, and do that. And again, I, I've done it before in Cabana Colony, uh, we did it in Limestone Creek, Pleasant Ridge, and a few other neighborhoods. So I think in addition to the density bonuses, which in some locations might be right, um, I think we need to really look at our existing uh, neighborhoods and help them be become workforce housing and safe workforce housing. Okay, thank you to you both for answering these formal questions. That completes that round. Now we're going to move on to a round where you the candidate will ask the other candidate two questions each. So you'll have up to two minutes to respond. So Ms. Marcus, if you will, your first question to Mr. Turnquist. Okay, my first question is, how would you address the traffic problems getting um, on and off the island with all the new development going on in the city of West Palm Beach? The, the island you're referring to? Palm Beach. Palm Beach, the island, okay. Um, they have two address, bridges, so. Yeah, and then both north and up and south bridges. How would I address the issue of traffic? Getting on and off the island. It's with the development that's happening in West Palm. Yeah, that's that's tough. Um, and, and I know that the we have we have uh, a system. Of, we we have water taxis which, which we can use to get off and on the island. Uh, granted, that that'll also work well during the uh, during storms and, and hurricanes too. But um, I, I think right now it, it, it works pretty well. And I know the traffic is thick. They try to go across sometimes during rush hour. Um, but uh, the, the residents over on, on the island, I mean, they use their, their own private vehicles and the traffic over coming back and forth is gonna be challenging. Um, I'm gonna have to work with the both cities, uh, West Palm and Palm Beach to see how we can mitigate that. I know with the bridges also, it's, it's, there's, there's little room for expansion there. Um, I will not vote to create another bridge. I think that Palm Beach likes the way their, their, the, the access is. So maybe expanding the bridge to maybe a three lane um, bridge instead of the two that they have going back and forth. Good to look into it though. Thank you, Mr. Turnquist. Mr. Turnquist, your question to Ms. Margus. Um, C 
seeing what where, where you started uh, with, with your career uh, back back then, and uh, where do you see, where do you see the, the greatest improvement from back when you started to where it is now? What do you think was your your greatest accomplishment? Well, I, I have to say that there's a uh, a couple of them, but uh, probably the first one would be acquiring all the beachfront property to make sure we had beach access. And then the preserve properties, uh, 30,000 acres in the entire county, uh, the bulk of went, what went to um, um, uh, Northern Palm Beach County. And then bringing companies like Scripps here. I mean, Scripps is uh, in La Jolla, California and Jupiter, Florida. Uh, and Max Planck Society is a German research institute that is nowhere in the United States except for Jupiter. And that's because of Scripps. I, I see lots of uh, spinoffs uh, uh, to happening now from science that are actually taking it from research into now clinical trials on all sorts of uh, different subjects. So I think the Scripps project and the Max Planck project being here, I just think the quality of life that's been created uh, in District 1 is something that people can be proud of. The, Kennedy, the um, Peanut Island, uh, making sure that that stays uh, uh, passive recreation um, so people can enjoy it. Um, and I think, you know, working on uh, clean water in the future is going to be very important for all of us. Thank you, Ms. Marcus. And your second question to Mr. Turnquist. My second question is, uh, what do you think the best use of the Kennedy Bunker is and who should restore and manage it? The best use for the Kennedy Bunker, I think that should be, um, that should be, uh, what's the word? I think that that should be like like a museum, and I think the county should should have the should give it over to uh, a nonprofit entity and work with them to to make sure that it's preserved and, and recognized as a, a landmark here in, in Palm Beach County and, and advertise it. Actually, uh, we are tourism based, and um, I don't think I mean although people knew, know that you know, the Kennedys were um, this this was their winter home. Um, I think that we should promote it a, a lot better and, and have it as a, a unique place for people to come and visit Palm Beach County. When people come to visit Palm Beach County, that's not one of the things that are on their mind unless they come here for a specific reason to do research on the Kennedy family. But I think we can promote it and give it to, uh, turn it over to a nonprofit entity to manage with the health of the county in, in the event that they need it. But I think we should turn it over to a nonprofit and let them manage it and preserve it and build it up where it's a, a unique place for, for people to Palm Beach County to, to promote. For instance, when people come to, to Jupiter um, and they, they want entertainment, one of the things they do is, you know, one of our landmarks is the square grouper. People come there, <laughs> you know, they want to party, they want to hang out there. So uh, the county bunker was a place where people can come in and uh, visit and learn more about the history of, of the, the Kennedys. Thank you, Ms. Turnquist. And your second question to Ms. Marcus. Um, I, I did, in my first question, I asked you about one of the things that you're most proud of that you, you accomplished as a county commissioner, uh, looking back then and where it is now. Also, I'd like to ask you, um, one of the things that you did not get accomplished while you were the county commissioner? Um, honestly, I, nothing comes to the top of my head. I mean, there's always, we evolve. When I started on the commission, we had a half a million people in Palm Beach County. We have a million and a half now and our issues are different. So I would have liked to have been there to, I mean, I, I, I'm trying to think of something I didn't get accomplished and I honestly can't think of anything. I was pretty comfortable when I left that I hadn't left a lot of things undone. But again, we evolve. And so um, I think that down the road, our issues will change like they did when I was on the commission. What was important in the beginning was not as important towards the end. So um, I'm actually very comfortable with the way I left the district and the way I left the commission. And i um, just excited if I get to go back to pick up some of these other projects and, and move them forward like I did the first time. Okay, well, thank you both for uh, as asking and answering those questions. Uh, on your behalf. And now we're gonna to move to the final portion of our forum this, this afternoon, and that is the closing statements. So Mr. Turnquist, you will go first. You have up to three minutes. Well, I don't think I need that much time to talk about myself. <laughs> well, Whatever um, you wanna say. 
well, you know, I'd like to thank you for hosting this forum. And, you know, it's always a pleasure when you can engage in dialogue with your opponent who is not your adversary and um, have a call your conversation and uh, a, a campaign where, you know, we're, we're speaking about the issues and not uh, attacking each other. Because one thing my father said before is that if you have to attack your opponent, then you have nothing to stand on. <laughs> so um, uh, let me go and say, this is a great country that has afforded me the honor to serve it. And I hope it allows me to serve it once more to give back to this country that which she has granted me, liberty and the pursuit of happiness. I remember when I first came to the United States as a teenager and um, I stepped foot on the ground and I was starting college, I had to call my father and said, you know, this is great country, there's so much I can do, you know, and I was losing focus. My father said, son, you know, focus yourself and, you know, and you, you could accomplish anything. But um, my journey began when I entered the United States of America back in 1989, 13 years later, after coming here, I earned my citizenship and I registered to vote. I chose the Republican Party and its guiding principles that was instilled in me by my parents um, of service to God, family, and country. And that, which, that's what compels me to serve. Um, I'm asking for the residents of Palm Beach County in District 1 and throughout the county to grant me the honor of serving them as the next county commissioner. Because my journey started over 30 years ago and I don't think it's, it's complete, it's not over yet, and it won't stop here. Um, so what I'm asking is for your vote on August 18th, or before, because early voting has started. Um, just want to say that my name is Calvin D. Turnquist. I'm a Republican candidate for the Palm Beach County Board of County Commissioner for District 1, and I'm asking for your vote on August 18th because this country is a beautiful country. And when I came here, I was in awe. Uh, coming from a country at the time that had only 300,000 people in it to Palm Beach County that has, that has much more than my little country. But America has embraced me as an adopted son and I wanna honor her and give back to that which she has given me. And that's to continue my uh, dedication to service. And um, so I would like to thank you for hosting this forum Thank you, Karen, for being so gracious and always being a, a good friend to me over the years. And I will hope that you will continue being that way even after this, uh, this election. So thank you so much and I appreciate the time. Thank you, Mr. Turnquist. We appreciate your participation. Ms. Marcus, up to three and, minutes. <clears throat> thank you and thank you for hosting this forum. And Calvin, thank you for being uh, a positive part of this campaign and not the negative part of this campaign and being a friend. And I always enjoyed working with you when uh, you were on the council and I look forward to continuing to work together. Um, one of the, uh, there are several projects when we talked before about not getting done and, and what I, one of the reasons I decided to run because I saw some things that I still wanted to see move forward. And one of them is of course the Peanut Island Kennedy Bunker, uh, making sure that the uh, port doesn't do its expansion. Um, and it, this has been an is interesting campaign because even though I knew that there were groups that did not want me to come back, um, the amount of money that is being spent from a corporate 501c3 or four that you can't even see who the don donors are and who the attack pieces are, and I'm sure Calvin's seen them all, the county commission has nothing to do with amendment two, and yet those are ads on, on radio and um, in mail that says we, uh, that I oppose the second amendment. I do not oppose the second amendment and county commissioners have nothing to do with the second amendment, just to clarify that. I think this is about, um, I, I want to give back to the community. I see things that I can continue to do. I can get on the job and start right away working on some of the things that I think need to be done. Uh, I think I've talked about them with the Lake Worth Lagoon cleanup and, and making sure our water quality stays safe. The, uh, Kennedy Bunker, the um, uh, port, and other issues, and the traffic and coming into West Palm. It's an issue of being able to get safely on and off to your homes in the town uh, that I know I've been working on in the past uh, with others. So um, I look forward to um, um, your votes. I uh, look forward to people seeing uh, uh, around the negative mail and the negative uh, TV ads. And, and look what we have to offer and what we have accomplished. Um, let me address the term limit issue. I did um, uh, honor term limits. I sat out eight years. The law requires you to sit out four and then you could go back. 
um, I was asked and encouraged to come back because they saw the need for some experience up there and to be able to guide um, the policymakers and the staff and give them the institutional knowledge and the historical that I can provide for them. So thank you again for hosting this. I look uh, forward to uh, support and thank you, Calvin, for being such a friend. Thank you. Thank you both. And that concludes this candidate's forum. On behalf of the Palm Beach Civic Association and sponsor Stanley M. Rumbaugh Legacy Society, I want to thank you very much to the both of you for taking part in this forum today and providing a lot of great information. Another vehicle to get your messages out to the voters of Palm Beach County Commission District 1. And to those watching on Zoom, thank you for joining us. We certainly hope that this has been a very informative uh, hour. And a reminder, the primary election is August 18th. So thank you again to our candidates. Thank you at home for joining us and enjoy the rest of your day. We want to thank the Stanley M. Rumbo Jr. Legacy Society for sponsoring this forum. We are grateful to today's sponsor, the Stanley M. Rumbo Jr. Legacy Society, and to the individuals who have made gifts and bequests to provide for educational programs in perpetuity.